Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I have a super cool stuff to show you. It's truly amazing and it's over here. Probably you already know what is it because you saw the thumbnail and you read the title. But nevertheless, it's super cool. So let's check it. Just look at this beautiful robot. It looks really cool. And today we're gonna check if it also runs really cool. So what is this? Let's see the specification. First of all, this is 6-axis robot. It has a payload of 500 grams, the working radius of 421 millimeters, and the precision of 0.1 millimeter. This is really nice. And it can be controlled through the CAN or Ethernet. So on the paper it looks really perfect. It has the brushless motors, it's quite powerful, it has a decent reach and a super nice precision. This should be definitely better than the cheap robot arm made out of the hobby style servers. Yeah! How I get this robot? This company, Infos, they contacted me and they asked me if I would like to review their robot. When I saw the specs of this robot, I agreed immediately, as this robot looks really perfect. It has a decent range, decent payload, super high precision. Perfect. This company, they don't pay me, so today you will see my own opinion. The robot has six actuators, it's six the same actuators. And each of these actuators has a, if I'm not mistaken, planetary gearbox with a reduction ratio of 36. Like this, it's easily back drivable. And the overall geometry looks like a geometry of universal robotics robots. I get my robot with this 3D printed base. So this part is 3D printed. This base is aluminum. And this 3D printed base fixed to the four suction cups. Like this, I can fix it on the table. And to use the suction cups, it's super easy. There is a pump inside and you just pump the air. And basically you need to pump the air till this red line disappears. And like this, it's fixed. Super easy, but super nice and super practical solution. As this robot uses the CAN communication, that's why the cables is goes like this. So first of all, first cable goes to the first actuator. After the cable comes from this first actuator goes to the second one, to the third one, to the fourth one, fifth one and sixth one. And at the end of the sixth one actuator there is a termination plug with 120 ohms uh, resistance inside. With this robot I also got the cables and the electronics. This electronics convert the CAN bus to the Ethernet. Like this we can easily connect this robot to the computer. And I also have this power supply. This is 42 volts power supply to which connected this emergency button like this. We can stop the robot if something goes wrong. The power supply gonna give the power to the electronics. The electronics gonna give this power to the robot. The robot gonna communicate to the electronics through the CAN bus and afterwards the electronics gonna communicate to the computer through the Ethernet. Yeah, something like this. So let's connect it. By the way, here there is a QR code to the wiki page and uh, on this page you can find the information about the robot and about electronics, about how to connect it and how to control it. So the cable, the capacitor for this electronics and this electronics which convert the CAN bus to the Ethernet. There is two CAN buses here. This is CAN bus 2, CAN bus 1. There is a connector for the power supply, this one. And the connector for the Ethernet to connect your computer. It basically consists of the two parts. One part is the CAN bus hub and another part it converts the CAN bus to the Ethernet. This is termination resistor because the CAN bus needs a termination resistor from each end of the bus. And I suppose this one is step down regulator in order to convert 42 volts from the power supply to the 5 volts for this board. So the capacitor goes somewhere, it doesn't really matter where to put it. The cable goes here. The cable from the power supply is this end of the cable will connect to the robot. Also what is nice that this board has the fuses for each port of the CAN buses. This end of the cable should go to the first actuator, so the actuator of the axis number one. And now we need to connect the computer to the Ethernet and we are ready to test. There is a nice handy slot here where you can put the cable. 
By the way, it is important that the robot and the termination resistor is connected to the same CAN bus, either to these connectors or to these connectors. But you should not put like a termination resistor here and the CAN bus here. And the capacitor could be connected anywhere. For the computer I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi because it's simplest and it's really in the spirit of DIY community. So this is a Raspberry Pi with this yellow cable. This is Ethernet cable. It's connected to this electronic board. Last couple of days I spent to write this module which I called infos.py and with this module you could do different things with the robot or with the single actuators. Enable actuator, disable actuator, you can change the position of the actuator. You can also check the position of the actuator, check the temperature of the actuator, change the acceleration, change the maximum speed and stuff like this. And also using this module you can easily modify it in order to make uh, your own commands. Afterwards I used this module for these two programs connect infos.py and test 6 degrees of freedom.py. The first program it connects this electronics board to the Raspberry Pi. This second program test 6 degrees of freedom.py it moves these actuators. So it basically makes some movement of the robot. And it's quite simple. So in the beginning I enable actuators. Afterwards I go to the uh, trapezoidal position mode. I can set the acceleration and maximum uh, speed for each actuator. And afterwards I can move the actuator in the different position. And at the end I disable all the actuators. So let's try to test it and see how my program works and how the robot moves. I think this is the most interesting how the robot moves. Let's power on the robot. We see that the Raspberry Pi is establishing connection with the electronics board. Connection is established. And now we see that there is this yellowish green light on each actuator and it's blinking. This means that actuator is ready but it's in disable mode. First of all I need to connect the electronic board to the Raspberry Pi by using my uh, program connect infos.py. The program replies connection is ok. And now I need to run program test 6 degrees of freedom.py. And this program should move our robot. Let's see how it works. Be prepared. Go. The robot arm is enabled. Oh, nice. Ah, this is beautiful. And actuator is disabled. And also this program shows me the temperature of each actuator. From the axis number 1 to the axis number 6. Let's see how it moves one more time. Why? Because it's super beautiful. It's enabled. Oh. So smooth, so nice, so quiet. By the way, in the instruction it's written that you should never switch it off when it's enabled. Or at least you should try to avoid switching it off. I should say that it moves very smooth and very beautiful. It's not like these uh, cheap uh, robot arms, which moves like and this one. I have added some moves to the previous program. Let's watch how it works. So the actuators activated, enabled, and now it starts. It stops at each position because I added the time delay in the program. It's super fast. Yeah, I really like it. It's fast, silent and it's very smooth. Oh, nice. Let's do it one more time. Start. Now let's check the backlash at the end effector. 
I'm not going to measure it precise, I'm gonna just estimate it. Nice, it still looks nice. Somewhere here. Around two millimeters. This is not exactly what they claim. They claim the precision of uh, 0 0.1 millimeter. Yeah, but still, uh, it's not bad. Not bad at all. And now let's check out this moves. I reduce the delay to the minimum, and now it should be more smoother, more better, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. The actuator is activated. Nice. I really like this part. And comes back. Beautiful! And now the conclusion time. I really like this robot. I like how it looks. I really like how it moves. It's so smoothly, noiseless. It's just perfect. It's almost everything what I wanted from the robot arm. The parameters of this robot arm is shown here. But you should pay attention that uh, these actuators have a backlash. So the real precision of the robot arm which you can get is around 2 millimeters. It means that the backlash of the actuator is around 18 arc minutes, which is not bad. 2 millimeters is enough for many applications. Maybe it would be difficult to make a 3D printer from this, but I think it's overkill to make a 3D printer from this robotic arm. Anyway, this company Infos, they made a Kickstarter campaign for this robot. And the link to this Kickstarter campaign is in the description to this video. This is not a surprise. Again, this company does not pay me any money, so this is my personal opinion about this robot. I also like the Python module which I wrote for this robot. I think it's very easy to use and it's very useful because you can use it even with the Raspberry Pi. I will put this module on my GitHub page, so like this uh, everyone who bought this robot uh, can use it. And in one of my next video I will show you how to use this uh, software. Like this, if you buy this robot you can follow my steps and run this robot easily and quickly. This robot has several interesting features. You can check like almost everything. You can check the temperature of the actuators. You can check the speed, the position, the current, all this stuff. You can set different uh, modes like position mode, velocity mode, current mode. Yeah, and all this you can easily do through the Python. The entire robot arm is controlled through the CAN. So either you use this electronics and uh, you convert the Ethernet from your Raspberry Pi or other computer to the CAN bus. Or you can use directly the CAN bus, like for example from the Arduino. Also, this robot is extremely modular, meaning that it has the same actuator at each joint. It has the same links, like this link is the same as this one. And also even the fixation bracket, like this and this, they are all the same in all the joints. So like this you can easily rebuild this robot for the 3 axis, for the 4 axis, for the 5 axis. And this also will help you to adapt this robot for many applications. I hope uh, soon we're gonna see many robots of this level. In my opinion, this is industrial level robot for the quite affordable price. And by the way, I will definitely use this robot in my future videos. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like it, to share it, uh, to comment it. And also you can support me via PayPal or via Patreon. All the links in the description to this video. And by the way, this is the names of my Patreons. Thanks to them, my channel is do exist. Thank you guys, you are the best. This is the future. Robotic revolution is coming, guys. Be prepared. See you next time. When all the motors are disabled, we can switch it off.